Hello, and welcome back to the Useful Chemistry Lab. Today, we will be doing the lab called Determination of R, the ideal gas constant. So to determine R in the formula PV equals NRT, um, we will be doing the reaction where potassium chlorate is decomposed um, with heat and a catalyst to form potassium chloride and oxygen gas. So we'll burn the potassium chloride in an ignition tube here and when, when the potassium chlorate decomposes, oxygen gas will be produced. The oxygen gas will flow out of the ignition tube into this Erlenmeyer flask, which is under a vacuum. Because it's under a vacuum, whatever gas is added here will force water up through this tube and into this beaker here. So knowing the, the mass of this beaker beforehand and the mass afterwards, we can determine the mass of the water and then through density calculate the volume of the water and that's equal to the volume of the gas that's generated. Also, um, we can measure the mass of the uh, reactants in the ignition tube and the mass of the products in the ignition tube. And the difference between the mass of the reactants and the products should be the mass of the oxygen gas produced. With that, we can determine the moles of the oxygen gas produced. And through that, we can determine the gas constant. The pressure and the temperature are known, uh, are known um, room from the from the room temperature and pressure Okay, so let's go ahead and, and set this lab up um, so first we have our ignition tube which looks just like a test tube but it's but it's much thicker and it is uh, and it's it's designed to withstand high temperatures okay so so here's our ignition tube to that ignition tube we'll we'll add um, about 0.3 five grams of potassium chlorate. This looks like a white powder. So we'll dump that in there. And we'll also add about 0.1 to 0.15 grams of potassium dioxide, MnO2. So add that in here. And, and that's just the catalyst. And we'll take the mass of that again. Now with those known masses, we can, we'll set it, set it here and it, it will be ready to, to burn with the Bunsen burner. Okay. Now um, to set up our, reaction, our, our uh, um, gas collection vessel. So we have a 250 Erlenmeyer flask, 250 milliliters. Fill that about up to the neck with water. So more than 200 milliliters, the, the, the most important thing is that this, um, is that there be enough water in here to, so that a, a, a good amount of it, probably a, 150 milliliters of so, or so can be displaced before it hits the bottom of that um, glass tube there. Okay. So we'll place our Erlenmeyer in its holder. Um, and very important, the, the longer tube, the one that goes down to the bottom of the Erlenmeyer, is our exit tube. So that tube has to be placed in this beaker here. And I'm just going to put it within the, the clamp here so it can be held secure and it won't flop around. This, guy, this little guy will go here with the, with the rubber stopper to make a seal for the whole system. So now the system is sealed. But before we start with this, we need to make sure that this tube here is full of water so that we don't account for that water um, so we, so that we don't account for the air that's in that tube when we're measuring the mass of the water at the end. So to do that we need to charge that tube with water. So this can be kind of tricky so you can use a partner when you do this but you want to take a pipette bulb and you want to push air into this tube and force water into this tube and then take, a, take the clamp and clamp it off so that no water can get back out. So I'm going to try to do this by myself, Let's see how we do. So I've got the, the bulb, I'm going to push air in, water's going to, water sh you should see water come through here, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab it, okay? So now that whole tube is, is full of water, and the system is one sealed, 
um, a complete sealed system. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and empty this beaker because, well, actually I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo this. Undo, when, when you undo this clamp, you shouldn't see much air come back in because it should be sealed, completely sealed. And I think that's still okay. Um, so now I'm going to empty this. Now I'll take the mass of this beaker because everything, every, all the water that will now go into this beaker will be water that has been pushed through because of the reaction generating oxygen gas. So now we can go ahead and light our Bunsen burner and decompose the potassium chlorate here. So again, to light a Bunsen burner, um, <clears throat> you have, when you light a Bunsen burner, you have the fuel control at the bottom and you have the air control at the top. So um, you wanna strike the match and hold it to the side of the Bunsen burner and then go ahead and turn the gas on. And it should be should look something like that okay so you can you can change the height of that of that blue flame a little bit but you want it to be right about there okay and then the hottest point of that flame is going to be right at the tip of that blue flame of that little blue flame and you and so, and so now we'll we'll decompose our potassium chlorate and we're, we want to start that reaction kind of slowly so we're going to bring the the flame in a little just from the side. And now you can see the water start to drip over here. And in here, you, you'll, in a minute, you'll start to see the, the white potassium chlorate powder um, start to melt and decompose. And continue to bring the flame in more. You can see the, the dripping increase as more and more oxygen gas is generated. Now it's a steady stream of water that's filling that beaker and pushing the water out from the Erlenmeyer. And now it looks like, I don't see any white powder in there anymore, so it looks like most of the potassium chlorate has been um, decomposed. But you want to, you want to wait until the, uh, the dripping slows to, you know, maybe just one drop every few seconds or so, and that's got most of it. So that's that's pretty good. If I, if I were doing this for data, I might wait a little bit longer, but for this video, we can go ahead and remove the flame, turn the gas off, and that's and so, so the volume of water here is equivalent to the volume of oxygen that was generated by that reaction. Um, so now we can go ahead and mass this beaker again, calculate the mass of the water with the density given at the, at the particular temperature that the lab is at, we can um, determine the volume, the, excuse me, the, yeah, the volume of the water. And that volume of water is equal to the volume of the oxygen gas. Um, and so we have, so we have the volume of the oxygen gas. We can, we need to wait until this tube is cooled, of course, um, because remember, hot glass looks the same as cold glass. Um, <clears throat> so once that's cooled, we can go ahead and take the mass of the ignition tube again. Now, we, now we're taking the mass of the products. So subtracting the mass of the products from the mass of the reactants will give us the mass of the oxygen gas. Again, um, through the molecular weight, we can determine the moles of the oxygen. Um, by knowing the, the temperature and pressure that are given, um, th th that are the, the room temperature and pressure today, we can determine the gas constant. Um, so we'll do, we'll do this experiment two more times, and you don't need a new ignition tube, just wait for it to cool, and then you can just add new reactants right on top of the old reactants, and take the new mass and just do the reaction again. Um, we'll do that three times total, and then, with, and then we can take an average R, and that will be R calculated. And we know the R actual. You can find that from your book. 
and then we can determine the percent error by the difference divided by the actual. Okay. So that's all for this lab. <laughs>